Hi, this is Dr. Larry Trammell, Dairy Specialist with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. During my tenure in Extension in both Wisconsin and Iowa, I've had the pleasure to analyze the profits of dairy grazing operations across the country who have shown that dairy grazing can be a very profitable way to produce milk. But then again, no two farms are alike in production management with much variability in both production costs and profitability across systems. So in this presentation, I want to help you understand dairy grazing as a viable production system and very profitable option for producers. Then I will share some data from millionaire model dairy farms to prove how profitable dairy grazing can be. Lastly, I want to share some challenges and benefits of dairy grazing that affect the economics and the success of it. The economics of dairy grazing all stem from the holy cow mindset where we first realized the cow is an amazing biological and economic engine for both us humans and for the environment as she converts and recycles forage and other biomass, yes, even dandelions to milk production. Wisconsin data in 2015 estimates the production of each cow impacts the local economy in the year of $34,000 per year. Dairy grazing is being impacted by the ever-changing livestock industry. Even though high milk production efficiency may not be grazing strong suit, there are other efficiencies that assist the success of grazing herds. In addition, even with all the new trends happening in our industry, grazing dairy cows is finding its place in adapting these new trends as well. As producers talk in the countryside, the question gets asked, can dairy grazing even be profitable? Producers have proven the answer to be yes. Dairy grazers at times can match or even exceed profits of other well-managed dairies. With that said though, no profits are guaranteed, but even back in 2009, with the extremely low milk prices, the millionaire model dairy producers covered their full costs of production when considering opportunity costs of both labor and equity. What is a millionaire model dairy farm, you might ask? Millionaire model dairy farms have been designated as successful farms who focus on grazing, labor-efficient milking facilities, crossbreeding, financial analysis, and cow comfort in a system designed to create millionaires in 25 years or less. They are hybrid grazing systems who focus on the best of both the confinement and the grazing techniques. They profit from lower feed costs and health benefits of the grazing system, the cow comfort and dry matter intake, and labor efficiencies of facilities and the grazing systems combined. So now that we know a bit more about what we're looking for, let's show some of the attainable profit levels of the millionaire model farms. I apologize for the busy slide here that shows the makeup and financial earnings of five millionaire model dairy farms in Iowa, Illinois, and or Wisconsin. With herd sizes ranging from 137 to 178 cows with a 2013 milk price of $20.07. In the green column to the right, Net cash income of $1,188 per cow, subtracting an equity charge of 4% across all the assets of the farm equals $476 per cow to give a return to labor of $847 per cow. If one takes this labor return divided by the unpaid labor hours, one can see labor earnings per hour between $32.52 to over $60 per hour with an average of $45.54 per hour. Thus, dairy producers can earn a pretty decent wage in a dairy grazing system. It is also worthy to note that the average cost per hundredweight equivalent to produce milk on these farms was $17.47, with all costs, including opportunity costs of both labor and equity, accounted for. One reason these dairies stand out in all aspects of labor efficiency per FTE, which is a full-time equivalent of 3,000 hours annually. These model farms average 69 cows per FTE, but more importantly, averaged over 1.3 million pounds of milk sold per FTE with labor costs per cow under $600 on average. They also had decent capital efficiency on average as well. These labor and capital efficiencies work their way into the profit equation where profit equals price minus cost in parentheses times volume. The profit is the return on assets. The price minus cost is depicted by the operating profit margin and the volume is depicted by the asset turnover ratio. 
using Dairy One as an example, with an operating profit margin of 24.5656% times an asset turnover ratio rounded to 51%, gives a return to assets of 12.48%. So bottom line, these dairies are pretty competitive with other dairy systems. The Millionaire Model Dairy Farm should give us great inspiration and confidence for beginning and transitioning dairy producers toward a profitable and also sustainable dairy system that is environmentally and energy friendly as well. This model system allows for entry of beginning producers and again as evidenced by 2009 data, this model dairy system seems more averse to risk than confinement dairy models, though some confinement dairy operations weathered 2009 without a loss as well. So let's move on to the concerns and the benefits of dairy grazing. These model farmers are outstanding in their field and they focus on the financial rewards and the quality of life that comes from their grazing system. Most would say it's easier physically, though it takes more flexible management. It is less capital input and it can be more environmentally friendly due to less tillage and mechanical operations. The family can also be more involved. With less cutting, raking, chopping, storing, feeding, forages, and with less manure, handling, and labor, it makes it a great mode of entry for beginning producers. It is not without its problems though, as there are concerns with lower milk production, bloat, heat, rain, mud, but overall, the model farms would give the system a serious thumbs up. So the model farms have proven grazing to be profitable as an endeavor. However, all grazing farms are not profitable. It really depends on management of the labor, the cows, and the land resources. Pasture, for example, can be a very cost-effective or it can be a very ex expensive endeavor and it all depends on quality, yield, and subsequent dry matter intakes. We realize that a lactating dairy cow needs lots of big, high-quality bites to produce milk, which we'll talk more about later. Grazers often brag about low feed costs per cow and often exhibit minimalist thinking. How little can I feed or do and still get by? versus optimalist thinking, does the extra feed or labor give me more profit? Typically, grazing reduces feed costs per cow, but quite often it is higher per hundred weight of milk, and if so, what did we gain? Profit margin over feed maintenance is more optimalist thinking, as the best grazers focus on optimizing dry matter intake, knowing that each pound of dry matter intake above maintenance equals two to two and a half pounds of milk. So the bottom line for successful grazers is feed thy cows. All breeds of cows can be successful grazers, but it is my opinion based on experience and research that crossbred cows express their genetic potential well in grazing systems as high component, smaller framed animals with better health and reproductive traits have contributed to the success of the millionaire model farms. Labor efficiency is also improved as crossbreds are often easier keeping cows. Be cautioned though, crossbreeding is in no way, shape, or form a substitute for genetic progress. It counteracts inbreeding and it contributes to hybrid vigor. This slide shows mostly positive benefits of various breed crosses for health, reproduction, and longevity. Notice that the only negative is utter traits for certain types of crosses. The keys to grazing management that affect the bottom line begin with the bottom base of intake. Optimizing time spent grazing with both high quality and the quantity of pasture available for adequate bite size. The rotation then allows better regrowth quality and yield that can net higher stocking density and milk per acre. Moving up the line into the green, the residual forage is key to more uniform grazing and better harvest efficiency and recovery. And then the top part is the rest. Rest yields higher plant vigor and production, necessitating subdivision of pasture. The overall key is a high level of management that comes with experience in a rotational grazing system. So the bottom line here is that producer experience pays. As more experienced grazers use more legumes, they use taller and improved grasses, they use more flexible grazing strategies and more pasture rest to yield almost double the milk per acre other less experienced grazers as depicted by University of Wisconsin research. Grazing tends to limit milk production, so supplemental feed and other efficiency factors need to make up for the energy limitation of typical grazing diets. 
Great pasture alone can only support 40 to 50 pounds of milk, and there is usually an energy and intake deficit of grazing cows even on superb pasture. Other challenges that affect the economics of dairy grazing are the variability of pastures throughout the season with often too much protein and not enough energy while trying to maximize dry matter intake with a higher NDF feed and still meet energy needs. Every farm we realize is unique in how it delivers feed nutrients to the cow and the costs associated with it. So dairy grazing is one great alternative, but supplementation and labor efficiency are often key factors in the profitability of dairy grazing farms. Each producer needs to use the resources available to make the most profitable decisions for their particular herd. Millionaire model dairy farms figure out ways to supplement grazing cows to achieve higher levels of milk production. To profit from the pastures itself, dry matter needs to be optimized by providing high quality and quantity of forage and a managed grazing system throughout the grazing season. Vegetative pasture and good residual forage is key with flexibility to take care of the daily dry matter intake needs of that lactating dairy cow. Milk production is often limited by a variety of factors. In this nutrition pyramid, it shows that 75 pounds of milk can be supported below that red line with doing nothing fancy simply by meeting basic nutrition needs. But a multitude of other factors can limit herds ranging from cow comfort issues to nutrition to reproduction to milk quality or even calf care or transition cow care. So success in grazing economics is often due to a well-rounded management system in all aspects of the dairy farm. The biggest bottleneck or concern on most dairy farms is often the milking system itself. Many grazers use a trans-Iowa low-cost parlor or similar design to achieve the goal of greater than 60 cows milk per person per hour. This is key to achieving a labor-efficient operation and many dairies can be effectively remodeled to accommodate and achieve the high-throughput parlors. Because in the end, many grazing studies show the difference in profitability between farms is often labor efficiency. And a key factor in labor efficiency is the milking system. So simply know that an efficient milking system is a very, very important part of a profitable dairy grazing operation. So as time winds down, I hope you better understand dairy grazing as a viable production system and a profitable option for producers. I hope the data shared from the Millionaire Model Dairy Farms prove how profitable dairy grazing can be. And lastly, I hopefully highlighted some of the challenges and benefits of dairy grazing that affect the economics and the success of it. So now as producers talk in the countryside and the question gets asked, can dairy grazing even be profitable? Again, no profits are guaranteed, but even back in the tough milk price year of 2009, the millionaire model dairy producers covered their full cost of milk production when considering opportunity costs of both labor and equity. So no, producers have proven the answer to this question to be yes. Dairy grazers as times can match or exceed profits of other well-managed dairies. So take care. Thanks for watching.